The Burping Museum of Natural History Established in 1941, the Modest Museum is located in the heart of Rockford, Illinois. Since 1998, the Burpee has been home to an annual event unlike any other where scientists, artists, and the general public gather together to learn about the field of paleontology. Paleofest is really, really, really unique. <laughs> There's really nothing else like it anywhere else. And that's amazing because, you know, the Burpee Museum, wonderful museum, but in the grand scheme of things, a quite small museum and in a quite small town. I mean, this isn't the AMNH in New York. Paleofest gathers together the leading names in paleontology, such as Thomas Holtz, Scott Sampson, Philip Curry, Jack Horner, and many more. Scientists who devote their lives to exploring the ancient remains of prehistoric animals as they try to piece together exactly what our Earth may have been like millions of years ago. In paleontology, you're really working at the heart of what makes science science. Science is a means of testing ideas and hypotheses. Uh, this is a field where we have limited information, and so we have to be very clear about what our hypotheses are uh, because we only have a, a limited amount of information that we can use to test it one way or another. Each year at PaleoFest, scientists specializing in all different areas of paleontology present the latest cutting-edge research to the public. Um, I think that as any other um, science, uh, paleontology is an increase in our knowledge in certain areas, in particular in what the, uh, it's, uh, the area regarding the uh, evolutionary uh, history of the planet. Um, because of paleontology, we know what happened in this planet before us. And uh, because of paleontology, we know better about the, uh, the early stages of the, uh, of the natural history. The Burpee staff, through the year-long process of planning PaleoFest, make sure that the event totally submerses guests. They also make sure that the museum is in top quality for the event. We get to about, you know, September, October, and then we start having PaleoFest meetings, you know, at first every couple of weeks or every month, and then by the end, you know, this past week, we had PaleoFest meetings every single day um, to make sure that everybody was on the same page and knew exactly what was happening. Um, but the amount of man hours throughout the whole museum that go into a event like this is enormous. Um, Everyone helps out. I'm just very, very honored and proud to be part of PaleoFest. I've um, been organizing the talk since 2003 and have been able to kind of be the, uh, the person who organizes this, but I have a, a great staff, a, a supporting new director. Um, uh, staff, and as I said earlier today, I make it look like I know what I'm doing all the time, and really I, it's the people that work with me uh, that know what they're doing, and I just, I just present it to the public as best I can. Between presentations, guests of PaleoFest can be given guided tours through the museum to get an official behind-the-scenes look at current research and preparation going on in the museum's lab. In the basement of the Burpee, there is also an observation window where the guests can see Burpee staff at work preparing fossils from their various expeditions from locations such as Montana and Utah. Special workshops take place throughout the day, geared towards the younger paleo enthusiasts. Interactive learning stations are also located throughout the Burpee, where volunteers and staff teach visitors about different areas of paleontology. And, of course, there's always the museum gift shop to get your junior paleontologist something to commemorate PaleoFest with. I think the great thing about PaleoFest is the combination of family activities and the scientific community coming together to collaborate. Well, PaleoFest is a chance where we can come and uh, actually talk to people and meet people and uh, get, a, get a better sense of, of what's out there uh, and whether or not, in fact, we're making an impact or not. And, of course, when you we do several PaleoFests, you, you meet people that are in different stages. So the first time I came to PaleoFest, there were some kids here who were really young. And they're still coming. You know, it's 15 years later, and uh, they're still coming. And now they're growing up. And... Um, 
you know, maybe they're not in university yet and haven't finalized their careers, but it's pretty cool to see that they're still interested in the stuff and they still uh, feel that uh, they can get something out of coming here. Paleo Fest has a lot to offer the student, hoping to one day become a paleontologist themselves. You have this opportunity for uh, high school students and undergrads to come see presentations. Uh, it's not as high stress as, a, let's say, a Society of Urban Paleontology Conference where there's one right after another, after another, after another, and there are potential advisors that you want to talk to, but they have a, a line of uh, you know, other students that need to talk to them or other paleontologists. Uh, PaleoFest is a little bit more laid back, it's a little bit more informal, it's a little bit more, um, uh, you know, it's a, a friendly environment and, and, and as I said a relaxed laid back environment so a student who wants to talk to Philip Curry or a Jack Horner or a Mark Norell can not feel the pressure and be able to go up and speak to someone uh, you know who is that well known in the paleontology community. Lots of great talks and lots of people who are really enthused about dinosaurs so this is kind of a one-of-a-kind event and it's a real pleasure and an honor to be here. Not only does the Burpee offer summer expedition opportunities to their sites in Montana and Utah but the intimate atmosphere of PaleoFest allows for students to approach well-known scientists and ask questions. Well the nicest thing about PaleoFest is it brings together a bunch of brings together a bunch of paleontologists to do one thing, dinosaurs and integrates them with the public. If you want a break from the presentations, lunch options are offered on the main level. My wife's probably glad that PaleoFest doesn't run much longer because otherwise I would come back much larger. You can also roam around the museum, a great opportunity to take in the amazing exhibits that the Burpee has to offer, such as Jane, the Diary of a Dinosaur, and the immersive Carboniferous Coal Forest. Auctions often take place throughout the day. After each presentation, fossil casts, books, and even paleo artwork are auctioned off. Sometimes, even the presenters like to join in in showing off the items. At the end of day one of the two-day event, a dinner is held. Food is catered in and guests get to sit down and discuss the day's events with others. After dinner, is the keynote presentation, one of the highlights of each PaleoFest. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. After two days and literally thousands of people flocking to the museum, PaleoFest ends as quickly as it began. The best part is for me is just seeing the enthusiasm of a community from uh, you know, senior citizens to five-year-olds uh, come together uh, to celebrate something in science. So I think that it's a, it's a great uh, uh, event in terms of the associators of scientists and non-science people in order to uh, build a, a space to discuss, to know people, to uh, interact with a lot of different colleagues. With the 2013 opening of Homer's Odyssey, the Burpee Museum doesn't show signs of slowing down. And uh, it was just a fun thing to do. It was a lot of work, but it was well worth it because everyone coming out of this has, has learned something. They're excited about the next PaleoFest. And questions, questions, some questions were answered, and some questions beget other questions. And that's how science works. Even so, as the last few bodies leave the museum and the doors close, you can't help but anticipate next year and wonder what the Burpee might have planned for future Paleo Fests. <laughs>